for a fireside on healthcare and the fourth industrial revolution, please put your hands together for Raman Singh, CEO of Munda Pharma, and moderator Kaldeep Singh Rajput, CEO of Bioformis. Thank you very much. Welcome to the InnoFest Unbound stage. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Awesome. Um, a quick introduction uh, about myself. I'm Kuldeep, founder CEO of Bioformis. Uh, we are a digital therapeutics company um, reinventing the way we manage patients with complex chronic condition. Um, you know, based in Singapore, offices globally, uh, raised over 50 million in funding, and uh, you know, we have been very closely working with Mundi Pharma. So. Um, Raman doesn't need an introduction, but I'll let Laman, Raman quickly um, spend a minute to introduce himself, and we'll get started. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Raman Singh, the CEO of Mundi Pharma, which is a global healthcare company specializing in both pharmaceuticals and OTC consumer products. Uh, I've been in Singapore since 2011. Um, prior to that, I've been around the world. So, and over the last seven, eight years, we have. Um, rapidly expanded, and the way I want to position, and I've been wanting to position Mundi Pharma, uh, was, is a digital company specializing in healthcare. So that's been the real vision. Uh, we aren't there as yet, but we are on, on this journey. Awesome. Uh, so, Raman, when we talk about this fourth industry revolution, uh, you know, we stand on the uh, brink of technology revolution that will fundamentally change the way we live, work, and relate to each other. And the scale is going to be huge, which mankind has never seen before. So what's your role and what's your thought about how healthcare is going to be positioned in this fourth healthcare revolution? So I, I, think, um, I think the purpose of healthcare is, is the same, no matter who you talk to, whether it's the regulators, it's the patients, the doctors or healthcare providers, or companies like ours. It is um, to bend the curve for billions of people living around the world. And of course, everybody has, in order to get this, to this objective, everybody has a different way to get there and a different purpose. Uh, but I believe for the first time, we see we are at a tipping point where the convergence of biomedical and technology has come together and actually caters to each one of these regulators in its own ways. Uh, so for uh, the, the developed world, or uh, it is all about controlling costs. They have a huge issue around aging population, it is, and it's about how do we make sure that the, the health coverage that they've been providing continues. For, um, for the patients, it's about taking control of, of their own health, of the health in their own hands, and in a way predicting uh, what could happen and taking measures in place in order to cater to that. When you talk about physicians, they want to ensure that the waiting time for, uh, for uh, patients is reduced and they can treat as many people as possible. And if you talk to companies like ourselves, our biggest cost is research and development. Um, the, if you look at the return on investment that pharmaceutical companies have on the products they research is less than 4%, 3.7%. It's a very expensive proposition to bring innovation to the market. And I think digital, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning has, has for the first time, um, we are not there as yet, but it has given us some optimism and hope that we can reduce this, this development cycle and the development cost using some of the innovations that are taking place. That's great. And um, you touched upon the pharma industry where you spend a lot of money on R&D. And um, FDA just released a guideline yesterday which essentially says, you know, how do you use uh, digital technologies to speed up clinical trials? Because essentially clinical trials take almost seven, eight years. You look at hard outcomes like hospitalization, mortality, but how do you look at more patient-centric outcomes? And, and can you talk a little bit about what's your perspective uh, and Mundi Pharma's perspective on using such technologies to either speed up drug approvals or even essentially 
um, improve efficiencies in the healthcare system? I think, um, I think technology is now playing a role, in fact, even before the drug actually gets to the market. It's at the discovery stage when you're trying to discover molecules that can actually cater to a specific disease. A lot of data that is generated today. So for the last two years, the data that's been created is more than that was created in the last 5,000 years. Yeah. So imagine the power of this data that's already created, and somebody could mine this data and come up with specific targets and, and drugs who are actually catering to the specific target. So I think technology is, is actually helping us at the discovery stage. So a lot of trial and error is avoided uh, in terms of when we select molecules. Uh, then comes the role of doing clinical trials. So if you, really, if you really see the conventional way of doing clinical trials is you do a, a trial in a cohort, smaller group of patients, and it works. And then you want to scale up that trial, and it's a very expensive proposition because initially you do 20 patients and you scale it up where there are thousands of patients to see whether the drug works and the drug fails. And that is what is actually driving up the cost of research and development. So I think technology can help us actually do a lot of iterations wherein a target group is selected where that drug could work. And then once the drug actually hits the market in terms of making sure that a particular patient segment where the drug actually works, the payer only pays for that. And that's where wearable devices play a role that you look at outcomes. And if the drug works, then yes, you pay for it. But if the outcome is not as one would have thought, you don't pay for it. So I think that's where the technology is actually playing a huge role. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And if you look at the whole drug development process all the way from phase two to approvals, reimbursement, and eventually commercialization, digital technology touches every piece. So one question I have, Raman, is uh, how much is this vision uh, uh, realized to its full potential? Where are we now? Uh, I think um, if you would have asked me five years ago, I would have thought I'm really optimistic and we are raring to go and a lot of sound bites across in a lot of conferences like these. Today, as I'm sitting down and reflect the five years that have gone by, honestly, and, and I'm, I'm a party to it, I'm underwhelmed with the progress that we've made as a, as a healthcare or a pharmaceutical industry. There's been a lot of uh, fantastic projects, and I kind of was walking through some of the booths that are outside in terms of a lot of startups coming up with a lot of, a lot of idea. But I think we as a company have realized today that in order for us to really have uh, some progression in this area, we have to partner with the startups. I was at the World Economic Forum at Davos, and for the first time, I saw a lot of companies like ourselves actually having a lot of meetings with startups and trying to collaborate with them in trying to start up a project. Rather than bringing this in-house, actually giving them, just not funding, but giving them access to the data. Because that's what I think all of you or all the startups need. I think they have a great idea, they could have a technology that would work, but I think the, the power of, 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 of combining the two is by having companies like ourselves share data with you so that you can then tell us how to package things and how to discover drugs, which was a very proprietary thing in the past. I mean, if you look at what the pharmaceutical company's real equity is, it's the IP and the data that, that, that we collect, which now we are beginning to share, and I think that's where I see a transformation could happen, which so far has been a little underwhelming. Absolutely. Um, so we have known each other for over three years now, and you know you describe Mundi Pharma as a technology healthcare company, um, and and of course uh, there has been significant progress in the region with startup partnerships. Can you talk a little bit about why that positioning? Um, you know, it is. Um, so when I when I started with Mundi Pharma, so my even my my career has been with the big pharma companies, and without getting into where I came from, it was about creating a unique healthcare company because I, when I, when I was in my previous life and I was working for these companies, I realized that, um, that there were a number of deficiencies in terms of coming onto the bandwagon that'll take us to the next century. And I wanted to create a pharmaceutical company that could focus on digital while we have the power of 
all that research that's behind us. And, um, and that's where I met Bioformis and met Kuldeep, um, where he was a, it, was, it was a startup four years ago, and um, it was, there were a lot of experiments that, that uh, they were doing, and I thought that the best possible way to collaborate with a healthcare company is to cater to a need that we have, a gap that we have, so that we can justify the funding. I think doing pilots that have no vision of scaling are pilots that will die one day. And I think that's, that's what we saw. We created a need, or a need existed. We, we felt that they actually could use their algorithms, their variable devices in giving us data real time, which can help us change the way a particular disease area is treated. And that's how the genesis all started. It started off with a concept, then it got converted to doing clinical trials in a small patient population here in Singapore, where the proof of concept was realized. And now we are talking about really scaling it up and linking their device and algorithm to all clinical trials that we do. And the goal is not to end there, because in the, in the area that we operate in, it's a very regulated industry. So we'll need to get necessary approvals for us to really kind of realize the true benefit of the device. So that's the journey we are on. Absolutely. And, and just touching upon that, um, you know, we have been working together now um, on how do we augment, uh, you know, care and how do we augment, uh, um, you know, therapies um, for multiple therapeutic areas. And, you know, we have, we have been focusing on pain, oncology, and so on. And most of these digital therapeutics companies today uh, are, are figuring out way, not just in clinical trials, but how do you combine this as, a, a, you know, companion therapeutics with a specific drug or a brand you have. So what is Mundi Pharma's uh, uh, thought around that, and how do you think uh, this will scale? So I think, I think this particular area, I think we as an industry need to take a lead. I think um, a company like Mundi Pharma or a company like ours can do various projects, but in order to really transform this particular sector, we need regulators to actually change the way they approve drugs. Some of, the, some of the digital therapeutics or areas in which some of these companies do generate data, we need people like FDA or EMEA to realize that this information is actually that they could use and realize in terms of using them in treatment algorithms, in reimbursements, in helping in the industry actually give us the, the, the benefit of doubt that, yeah, the data generated is sufficient enough for us to approve. And this is where <clears throat> I think that the regulators are, are still working on. There is, there is no specific criteria that's currently being built. And this is where I feel that we are, we are lagging behind, unlike some of the other areas where you have regulations really promoting uh, the digital uh, revolution. Healthcare has been confined to wearable devices, diagnostics, etc. But the real benefit where the regulators realize would be actually in treatment. And this is where I think the evolution can happen. Absolutely. And, and you know, we have been working very closely with the FDA really to define guidelines on how do you combine digital technologies with a therapy and eventually augment uh, care. So I know we have just a minute left, Raman. Last question was really, how do you see, uh, you know, you're a pharma company and, and when digital technologies are combined, do you think you would go and sell the product to a pair, or you would sell outcomes? What's your thought on that? You know, I, I think no longer these two are disjointed, because these days, no regulator or a, uh, or a government body would approve a drug which would cost hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of dollars with no outcomes. In fact, the whole genesis of us doing clinical trial is to generate outcomes to show that at this drug works. I think where we are heading towards is people are living longer, the healthcare needs are rising, and everybody is concerned about the rising healthcare cost. I believe that outcome-driven medication is going to supersede, let's try if this medication works, if this doesn't, something else, and something else. So I think that's where we are heading, and yeah. I think that's the future of healthcare. Awesome. Thanks, Raman. It was a pleasure having you, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you.